You might be wondering why I gathered you here today. No, um, this is the final presentation for Eve Sardam 2016, and I think we saved the best for last. So we have here uh, CSP Fozzy and CSP Mimic, who are going to be talking to us about a little bit about, I think you have a little presentation prepared at first? Yes, a little presentation first, and then a bunch of Q&A. Yes, and then there's a question and answer, so you can have any of your EVE development related questions. Uh, you can fire at the, the two of them. We have a microphone down there. Uh, please, before you um, ask your question, introduce yourself with your in-game name. And then uh, over to uh, Fozzy and Mimic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Presentation on the couch is definitely the best way to, this is, to end this a is like event a... like this. Yes. <laughs> hey everyone, uh, I'm CSP Fozzy. Uh, this is uh, our game design panel presentation. We're also going to have a little bit of talk at the beginning uh, about some of the stuff we're kind of we're thinking about for some new ships and some of the, uh, the sort of design approaches we make when we're looking at what kind of new ships to make. Um, I'm a game designer with Team 5 um, work on a whole bunch of different things. Uh, most recently been working on uh, engineering complexes and command bursts uh, with the rest of Team 5 and uh, we're really excited to release those on Tuesday. And uh, this is CSP Mimic. Hello, um, I am the development producer for Team 5 so I work with Fozzy. I sit across the desk from him um, and basically I am the go-between for the team and all the other teams, so I have to know what everybody's doing and when it's going to be ready or what they need to get everything done. Uh, so first, yeah, like I said we're going to do a short discussion on ship design. Uh, then most of the time is set aside for your questions for myself and Mimic. Uh, so go ahead and start thinking about your questions now, and we'll have people line up and uh, go up to the front uh, with that microphone to ask them very soon. So, uh, at the very beginning here, I just want to talk quickly about um, one of the lenses that we look at ship design. When we're trying to decide what kind of ships to make, we're trying to uh, refine our ship designs, come up with interesting uh, concepts for ships, interesting mechanics for ships. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways to look at a design problem. And looking at it from multiple directions, from multiple lenses, can be really valuable. Um, you can see the problem from a bunch of different directions. You can see potential opportunities that you might have missed otherwise. And different approaches work differently for different genres often. And it's interesting that sometimes a game like Eve actually picks up some of our most interesting design lenses, not from games that you might think are more similar, but actually some games that are actually quite different in a lot of ways, but have similar design problems. I've been thinking about this recently since we just announced actually we've got some new promo ships that are coming out next year. Uh, our new Concord uh, ships uh, that are going to be available to players. Uh, it'll be available with FanFest. Um, they're going to be like the uh, Gnosis and Synesis and they'll be ships that are given out by CCB. And we'll talk a bit about those at the end. But this is something I've been thinking about but as we think about what we want to do with these ships. So I thought I'd uh, talk a little bit about it, give you guys a little bit of a peek behind the curtain of one of the many ways we think about these kind of problems. So uh, EVE Online, uh, our design obviously has a bunch of strong influences and design elements from other games. Uh, we borrow all kinds of different approaches for uh, game design. Uh, we always love to read what other designers are writing about, the way they approach their problems, uh, watching their presentations at GDC. Um, and there's a lot of games that you may find kind of obvious that are influencing EVE's design and have in the beginning. <coughs> Ultima Online, very obviously one of them, uh, the classic sandbox uh, PvP oriented uh, MMO. Uh, Elite, the original uh, space exploration trading game. Uh, and one that may be a little bit less obvious, but actually really overlaps a lot with the design that we borrow a lot from, is Magic the Gathering. Um, this is one of the grandfathers of gaming and game design. Uh, a really, really popular game for a very long time. And obviously a very different genre than Eve. Uh, it's a trading card game rather than a space MMO. But uh, a lot of the ways they approach problems, and actually the fact that they've been very public over the years, especially through uh, their lead designer Mark Rosewater's uh, blogging, um, they've been very public in how they approach problems. And so actually a lot of their phrasing, a lot of their concepts have become very common in the whole game design industry. And we definitely borrow a lot from that and have from the beginning. The original EVE design team had a lot of uh, Magic players, and that's kind of continued all the way through. 
So what I want to talk a little bit about today is the concept of top-down and bottom-up design. If you're familiar with Mark Rosewater's blog, then you probably are familiar with this concept, but if not, then this may be new to you. It's one way to look at item design in games. It works really well for very complex items like Eve ships or like cards and magic. Um, and it's two distinct approaches that come from really opposite directions. You look at the same elements but do them in different orders. And you get very different results, but both results can often be really great. You know, it's often worth trying both to see what gets you the best results. Uh, so the top, in this case, is talking about flavor, lore, concept, art, feel. So it's the, the, uh, the kind of uh, intangibles about a card or a ship or a, an item in a game. The things that make you feel excited, even before you know what it does. Um, a, uh, you hear about a, uh, a match example, um, if you make a card, it's called Horde of Zombies. That seems kind of exciting, even before you know what Horde of Zombies does. And it might be worth seeing, well, what could we then make Horde of Zombies do? Uh, bottom is from the other side, it's more technical, so game mechanics, verbs, abilities, details, where you know what you want the card to do, but you don't know what frame you're going to put it in, what kind of flavor, what kind of lore, what kind of art. And we use both for our ships, um, in fact there's examples of both all over EVE. One of the uh, really uh, big examples of top-down design that we've used in the past couple of years, the Mortis Legion ships. Uh, so in this case, we started out with the idea that, okay, we want to add a new pirate ship. We think there's some room for a new pirate ship in EVE. It would be exciting. We had just been revamping the previous pirate ships in EVE. It might be nice to add some new ones as well. We then actually thought, okay, so let's see if we can come up with a good concept for the uh, Minmatar Kaldari split. Because we don't have a pirate faction, it's Minmatar Kaldari. And came sort of coming up with what we could do with that. And thought about oh, maybe a speedy missile ship. Maybe with a web bonus of some kind. Uh, and then kind of focused in on, well, that just speedy missile ship would be great for Mortis Legion, but then bounce that back with, from the lore to, um, well, actually, Mortis Legion is better with uh, Kaldari and Galente, rather than Kaldari and Minotaur. That would fit, fit better. But we were, at that point, we really liked the concept of Mortis Legion, so we made a slight shift in the design and moved it just from a web bonus to a scram bonus to fit the Galente theme instead. And that's how the Mortis Legion sh ships actually came. It wasn't a case of us saying we really felt we needed this specific role. We felt we had a room, some room to add a new ship, and it'd be exciting to add a ship with these kind of flavor elements. And then we used that to get to the kind of mechanics. And of course, we balanced the mechanics. In some cases, overbalanced the mechanics, uh, and then balanced it back down again. Um, but the mechanics came after we had determined what kind of feel we wanted for the ship. Uh, another good example of this, the Gnosis and the Synesis, which we're just going to be releasing to everyone who's been subscribing. Uh, coming up very soon, uh, with, as a celebration for the Ascension launch. The Gnosis and Sinesis are both ships where we started with the concept of, what if we created a ship that everyone could fly? What if we created a ship that we could just give out as a celebration that everyone can fly? And everything else just came from that. So the fact that they don't use any of the racial ship skills, the fact that they've got bonuses as role bonuses to everything, the fact that they are society of conscious thought actually fed out of that, out of that feeling of what if we want to make a ship to give out to everyone, because society of conscious thought were very involved with giving the clones in the lore, the clone technology to capsulaires. Um, so we, we built it really out of that initial concept and turned it into a set of ships that are really actually very exciting. The Gnosis is a lot of fun, and I'm really excited to see what people do with the Sinesis. If anyone's not familiar with it, it's very much like the Gnosis, but it's destroyer size. Um, has bonuses to every weapon, doesn't require any uh, ship skills other than a spaceship command. And uh, it's probably going to be a little bit, probably at its best as a drone mode, but can be used in a whole bunch of different ways. I'm really excited to see what people do with it. And another example of uh, top-down ships that we've released in the past couple of years, the Navy Battlecruisers. I guess some of you guys may remember when we put these out. The concepts here was we started with a, we knew that we wanted to illustrate the empire that built up the militaries. We wanted to illustrate um, more advancement and fill out some more of these uh, Navy ship lines. And so we made the decision first, okay, it's going to be Navy uh, battlecruisers, and then from there we decided which Navy battlecruiser hulls to use, what kind of mechanics to use, and the mechanics kind of fed out from that top concept. But you, although this method works really well, this top-down method, it's not the only one. We have a lot of ships that also come from the completely opposite direction. And one of the biggest examples of that are the tactical destroyers. So these ships, we actually started with the, uh, the concept of what if we had a ship that had different modes you switch through. Um, something like the, the morph mechanic for magic, or a stance switching in a lot of other MMOs, um, often in tank classes. Uh, we decided that would be an interesting mechanic, that actual action to bring into the game. We provide a lot of interesting options. There's a lot of cool things we could build around it. 
And then from there, we, at that point, we didn't know whether we wanted to make destroyers. We didn't even know it was going to be a tech free ability. We decided, all right, we want this mechanic. We want to explore what we can do with it. And from there, everything else flowed. Uh, we decided to make it a tech free ability, partly because tech free is about flexibility. So although it's not very similar in a lot of ways to the tech free cruiser mechanics, it still fills some of the same kind of high level goals. And uh, we decided the destroyer class fit well. Partly because, as a frigate, we decided it would have been very hard to keep it from being even more overpowered than it ended up being. And uh, that kind of flowed all out from that mechanic. Uh, another example, a bit uh, smaller example, the Endurance. Uh, it was a case where we knew we wanted, people wanted to um, mine ice with a frigate. And we knew that mechanic was something we wanted, and then everything else flowed out. Whether it was going to be a Tech 2 frigate, whether it was going to be ore, all of that uh, came from, in this case, a player request. Some players have been asking us, hey, I want to pit a mine ice in a small ship, can we do it? And that had been a request for many years. And uh, we saw the opportunity and decided to build up from that, that core activity, that core action. And then one of the ultimate cases of this too is the command destroyers. Uh, these are a ship where we actually started from the micro jump field generator mechanic. Uh, that was the, the, the start of this whole idea. Um, CCP Rise was really excited about this idea of the, the micro jump field generator jumping people around, uh, being able to jump your allies, being able to jump your enemies. And we decided that, that was something we wanted to do, but then everything else flowed out of that. We didn't know at that point whether we wanted to put it on a destroyer. We thought about it for a while putting it on um, command ships, uh, the battlecruiser side ships. Uh, we thought about putting it on existing ships. Uh, we thought about putting new ships in different categories, like a new battleship or something like that. Um, ended up kind of honing in on all of the rest of it, all the flavor, all the size of the ship, all the other parts of it from that mechanic outward, uh, that, that very bottom-up method. And so this leads us to, the reason I've been kind of thinking about this a little bit and want to talk about it a bit, uh, is that it's something that we're also thinking about for these new promo ships. Uh, so we've announced at uh, E Vegas that next year we're going to be releasing three new uh, ships. One of them is a decommissioned Concord frigate, decommissioned Concord cruiser, and decommissioned Concord battleship. And these are really exciting ships. They've been, there's been these models in the game for a very long time. We've actually used that frigate model for uh, the Council Diplomatic Shuttle, uh, the shuttle that we gave out to everyone as a celebration of the 10 years of the CSM. But we've never had them in players' hands as a combat ship before. And we really thought that would be a great celebration of the 20th anniversary of CCP. So uh, as part of the 20th anniversary fan fest, um, I, we actually haven't worked out all the details of exactly how these are all going to be out, but you'll definitely get some of these by, um, going to FanFest. You'll definitely get some of them going to Vegas, and you'll get, uh, the Marshall will be given out at least to people that go to both FanFest and Vegas, and there's probably going to be another way to get them too, which we haven't completely nailed down. Um, but the idea behind these is really exciting, and there's something that we know that, as a designer, so this is something community came to us, asked, hey, we want to create these new ships, uh, what do you think, can we, can we do it, can we get this task in? Uh, and as we're kind of going about solving the problem, we know the ships are going to be with tons of players. They're going to be a lot like the Gnosis and the Sinesis. So we know the balance can't be too out of whack. It can't be something too insane because it's going to not be all that expensive, at least at first. Um, we know that there's lots of available flavor for the Concord ships. And this was really an obvious candidate for a top-down design. And so we're still pretty early on. We don't have anything nailed down. But I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the ways we're thinking about these ships uh, and start getting the feedback process going. because. I think it would be really exciting, especially with a top-down design, to start hearing from you guys what kind of things would you like to see in Concord ships. What would be exciting? We can, obviously, whatever we end up with has to be balanced, but that's a great thing about top-down designs. You first start with what is uh, cool and then work to the balance from there. Uh, so there's lots of options, nothing decided yet. We're looking for feedback, and some of what we're thinking about, I think, uh, would fit the flavor very well if these were related to tackle. It's a bonus to tackle disruption. Um, they are ships that are given out to everyone, like the Gnosis and Nessus, so they shouldn't be leaning towards one faction or the other. Um, interception and warping uh, is something that Concord tends to appear right uh, beside you when you've done something bad, so it'll be interesting to see a player ship that has some advantages to go along with that. Um, potentially requiring all racial skills instead of no racial skills, um, something that is a bit more for people that are widely trained. And uh, potential of playing with the Tech 2 class. I think it would be very interesting if we made uh, some of these Tech 2 ships rather than just Tech 1. Um, obviously, you have to keep the uh, fact that we don't have a ton of them in mind, but 
Uh, I think those may be really interesting to think about, um, and I'd really like to hear from all of you guys. Uh, so here at the event, after this, um, tonight, uh, and then of course on the forums and on Twitter and on Reddit, we're going to talk to the rest of the community outside of Amsterdam about this as well, start getting their feedback, but uh, I'm really excited to hear what kind of things you think would be exciting to see in a promo Concord ship. So now, that's the presentation that I have uh, put together. Um, and we've got the rest of this time for questions. And these can be questions about what we just uh, talked about. They can be questions about any of the rest of the development. Uh, for uh, We are obviously not complete experts in every area, so there may be some things where our answer is, sorry, you'll have to ask somebody else, but we can try to answer as much as possible. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, we decided to do it this way simply because um, well, with Ascension coming out on Tuesday, there's, there's not that much that you guys don't know, so, um, or that we haven't spoken about. To us, sounds like we've spoken about a lot, but then you always realize that not everybody has a chance to go to everything that, uh, and see everything and read everything. So if you guys want any clarification on what's coming on Tuesday or uh, anything from before or any kind of anything, just ask. That's why we have. So, questions. So yeah, you can go ahead and line up right there by. Uh, and, uh, and I'll start off with the first one. Uh, it's a question for both of you. If CCP wrote you a blank check to develop whatever you would like for Eve, what would it be? So my go-to answer for years has been awkward links, um, but I can't use that now. I, me personally, I would uh, pull out the chat mail and basically just pull out all of all of the ways that we currently are able to speak to people in game and make it work the way we speak to people normally. I think that uh, I think that there's so much more potential to be able to interact with people in game, and that's such an integral part of it. And I don't think that. The that we currently have in game are where I would like them to be. So I would do that. I think for me, it would probably be redoing the Corbin Alliance system. Uh, being able to There's a lot we can do there, and we've kind of we've made steps in that direction. We've improved the UI in a couple of different passes, but uh, at some point it'd be great to do to just like dig in and spend a good year just completely redoing it. Yeah. All right, thank you. That too. Hi, uh, Gecko and Rekka in game, and um, my question actually developed um, during the Valkyrie uh, presentation because. Um, uh, I thought about lore, and uh, and that we act that, that actually the, the the wiki is offline, and so there is a the, there is a version a non official version on. But but what are you gonna do there? I mean, you just delete more or less delete <laughs> the lore. <laughs> so that that that's interesting. And um, the second thing is how how could we integrate. Um, the law more into the, the actual game and gameplay, that some ideas? Yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, the, uh, the wiki going away definitely did uh, provide a bit of a setback there. Um, the guys in backstage have done an amazing job. I assume they're one of the people you're referring to um, with the player collections and all this lore and backups of some of the stuff that's on the wiki. Uh, the Chronicles, I think, are, are one way to do it, although they're kind of patchwork and it can be hard to kind of find an entry there. Um, I think the best thing to do would be to move something into the client to have more more access to it. Um, we've got bits and pieces all over the place, the things like uh, corp descriptions and uh, region descriptions, which are thankfully back now. We've got to fix that bug. Um, and things like the, uh, the new MP where we can kind of tie the lore right into like a voice acted actual uh, storyline um, that kind of pulls in bits and pieces so you can see both the story that you're dealing with right now but also see bits of references to the other stuff that experts would know about and you might find out about later. Uh, I think that's really great but yeah it would be great to be able to have something kind of like a um, 
like Lissilopedia from Civ, but in the client. We've talked about doing something like that before. Um, and I think it would be great to, get to do something. Like that. And that might be more maintainable than the wiki, which I think that was part of the big problem. Is it was just hard to keep up with it. Yeah, that's. Um, I I used to be a GM. I absolutely loved the wiki because it was when I was first starting out and having to learn everything that I just didn't know. I mean, it's all very well being in the logs, but. Like you say, all the law and everything like that, you just need to know that as well. And it was incredibly, incredibly helpful. And it was a very sad day when that went away, but it just, we couldn't maintain it at the level that it needed to be. And so that's why we had to, we had to close it. But yeah, we, we need something else. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, I actually have a question regarding uh, game design on my like, um, Titan specifically uh, Fleet Tanker size, because for example, um, we added, you added a lot of new modules, really cool modules with the capital changes, for example, like an extra set of guns you have to carry, but um, because on the capital modules there's a giant difference if you have them unpackaged or packaged, uh, so for example, I run into the problem that I cannot fit, um, like I cannot fit everything in. For example, I, for, I'm only able to uh, have, I think, three of the doomsdays instead of all the five or so, and it would be really helpful if, you, if, you were, if there would be any plans to like hire the size because you can't fit anything up in any, every new module in, which is really annoying. So you have to like store it somewhere, which is well. Yeah, I can talk a little bit about that. Um, so that was intentional. Um, the idea <laughs> was uh, we didn't want uh, we wanted you to have to make choices about what what you brought with you and what you fit and. Um, in, in especially long battles with a bunch of ships around you that can all refit, it can be a little bit too trivial sometimes to switch uh, modules. Um, so we that we built, we started with the idea of okay, we just want these to be really big, so you can't just carry all of them uh, in any uh, in these fleet hangars. You have to make some choices. Uh, but then we actually from there we decided to make the uh, the package size a lot smaller, just to help like a jump freighter logistics or moving stuff out to your staging areas or moving from place to place. Um, so the idea was that that's actually the the um, uh, package size is the exception to the rule rather than the other way around. Uh, if that makes any sense, uh, it is something I can definitely see it being uh, like like I can see the, the frustration with it. Um, I'm not sure if it's something that we could, we'd ever be able to just uh, crank up the size to the point where you can kind of freely. <laughs> whatever you want. It might be nice to limit the, that rethinking more in other ways rather than doing it this way because this way may feel a bit more kind of like uh, like an inventory management problem which is not usually as fun as other kinds of game design or game play problems. Um, so it would be, I think it would be better to deal with this in another way um, and uh, we just haven't uh, come up with a better way to deal with it. Uh, but one way that we need to deal with uh, too much flexibility and being able to just fit whatever you want in one battle. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Bowman. <laughs> <laughs> so I talked today about my experience as a CSM member at, at the summit, and I was wondering what you guys' experience was because it's something that I don't think you got hurt that often. So how did you feel that um, it was. I, I have to. I have to admit that I was quite nervous about it because it was a, a completely new group. We didn't really know you guys, and it hadn't been very long, and we hadn't had, I mean, we'd had some conversations, uh, but not really, not really got to know each other yet. Great. But it was, I don't know, I think it, it was surprisingly productive. I, I know that sounds very skeptical, but it was. I was thinking that sometimes, like, oh, okay, the, the, the days are really long, and you sit and you talk about spaceships all day, and it's, in a really small meeting room and it smells awful and they by the end of the week because it's <laughs> so many of us all in the same place and there's no windows. Um, but it was it was really great to have like proper conversations about stuff and just sit down and not there was just everything was just easy. It just worked the way that it needed to work or the way that we wanted it to where we were able to just say, hey guys, we're thinking about these things, what do you think? And we just had really good conversations about all of Eve, it was awesome. Yeah. Hello, Mita Enak, Heidengay. Uh, what's your opinion on uh, low cost?
lost and only uncatchable doctrines for ages of where you just throw them away and avoid to fight basically and just gank the entorsorship which you don't read. <laughs> yep, so I think it's a very good question. The, um, we always wanted to make sure that the barrier of entry wasn't too high uh, for the new soft system. Uh, and that was one of the one of the most the, the kind of the highest goals. Um, so I don't think we never want to to increase that barrier too much. Uh, so the cheap aspect of it um, is something that that is that is a feature, not a bug. Um, the uh, the mobility, uh, the avoiding fights, that's that's kind of an eternal challenge to Eve, uh, and we definitely like to improve that. We, but we definitely haven't hit the um, uh, the right balance with the current system in that, um, and that's why I think one of the one of those problems that we can never uh, fully figure out a way to get people to uh, to be more willing to engage each other, and that would be spectacular. Um, but uh, but I think the 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 fact that you can engage with with inexpensive ships is definitely is definitely by design because that's part of what allows a variety of organizations instead of just to to have large amounts of stuff. Especially the focus here was on 200 artillery class that basically in Star Wars you can interdict them, you can't lock them before they warp. Yep, uh, the, the, the claws are something that uh, we obviously need to keep an eye on. Um, they uh, are uh, alpha in general is, is very strong, and this is one of the examples where uh, all the advantages of alpha kind of uh, pool together with everything else. Um, it can take the most advantage of it because it doesn't have to be on field for very long at all. Um, and it's something, yeah, I think it would be definitely worth looking at, uh, worth making some change in the future, but I, I can't say for sure exactly what those will be. Thanks. Uh, hi, I am going to start by saying I'm not an expert on the matter, uh, but I've been following the controversy around uh, roll call changes that are coming up with Ascension. Uh, especially, I'm thinking about the combat changes. Um, and I, I know a lot of people are very happy, and some are maybe uh, a bit scared <laughs> of the potential of them. Um, I'm wondering what the thoughts are behind that, and also considering maybe how long time it took to change the speed pool. How ready are you to take actions if it proves to be uh, a difficult ship, say? Yeah, so we can take action very quickly as necessary. Um, there's a question. There's always a question of uh, the difference between letting letting something kind of work its way out and responding. It's not really a question of how quickly we can respond. It's a question of how quickly we should. Um, there's always the challenge to figure out. Uh, but with Oracles, uh, we we're pretty happy. We, we think it's very likely, yes, that they are a bit overpowered in some ways at launch. Um, in to a certain extent. Uh, we think that it may end up being the uh, the funny kind of overpowered rather than the uh, unfunny kind of overpowered, um, but we'll find out. Um, and uh, <laughs> there's only one way to find out. Um, is there is there is some kind of special philosophy around the, uh, around the role Like, why do you uh, do you decide to take such a massive step? Uh, partly just because it's been kind of in the dumpster for so long. It's, we might as well make it the most powerful ship in the game for a while. <laughs> Also, I think um, it would be great to get it to the point where it's uh, it's re it's really really like action overpower in in somewhat defensive situations, um, but then find ways to tone down in other places so we can see where where people are using it, where it's getting broken, and then tone those down without having to tone down the overall power of the ship. I think it would be great if we got to the kind of point where we see the uh, the skiff and the procurer defenses. Where they they're crazy overpowered, but it actually is just kind of okay because uh, what it gets us like amazing kill boards of uh, a bunch of black ops all dying to them, uh, <laughs> and so if it's that kind of overpower, then that's gonna be good. And then other broken types of overpower, we can try to target those with very specific changes as needed. All right, thank you very much. Hi. Uh, hi, thank you. I'm uh, Jack Ramel. Uh, I'm living in a C6 wormhole, and the current state in wormholes, especially C6 and C5, is not very good. Uh, we see a lot of people leaving, and uh, I wondered uh, what is your uh, uh, vision on the wormholes, C5, C6? Is it still healthy? Is overall wormhole space maybe still healthy, or does it need something tweaked, fixed? 
before it maybe dies. So it definitely needs stuff tweaked. Um, I think one thing you're going to notice over time, if you've asked, uh, over these kind of Q and A's, so uh, is uh, whenever you ask a question of is X healthy, the answer is always going to be no, because uh, everything could always be much more healthy. Uh, I don't think it's it's going to die. Um, uh, there is uh, both a self balancing mechanism of the. Um, the supply and demand for uh, tech threes that uh, helps a lot, uh, but also just um, wormhole space thrives on things that seem impossible to everyone else. Uh, but the the mechanics are yeah we've definitely seen um, a decrease in a, in overall population for the the high class and some of it's moving to low class, some of it's moving to null set. Um, it came because we did at the same time uh, changes that toned down uh, some of the uh, the kind of frankly broken um, escalation farming uh, that had been going on before, and at the same time buffed NullSec. Uh, so that caused some people to shift. Both, some people would have shifted anyways just from the, the NullSec buffs too. Um, but uh, it's something we definitely need to keep an eye on. We, we're definitely uh, talking with um, uh, Newman from the CSM. He's provided a lot of really interesting uh, ideas and uh, has been funneling us a lot of great feedback from the wormhole community. And uh, we're definitely gonna be making more changes. Okay, thank you. Hi guys, this is Sarah Nessa again. Um, I'm asking you guys if there are any ideas about new battleship class, like a tech-free battleship, or even uh, something like a logistic, a, a new logistic for shields, actually. Because it's pretty nice, the nester, actually, for armor, but there's nothing compared to the nester in shield ships. And shield ships are pretty perfect for hunting targets down because the fleets go much faster and you're pretty accurate than in armor actually. Um, yeah, that's yeah. my good question. question. Um, we don't have any plans uh, that are set in stone right now other than the, the Marshall, the uh, Concord battleship, but that's going to be a uh, promo ship. Um, I think the uh, a Tech 3 battleship it would probably be more of a ways off. I think we need to get the rest of Tech 3 ships into a bit more healthy state first. Um, and we, we're probably going to have to make some, like, reevaluate all the kind of the, the systems around Tech 3 ships. So we want to make sure that we are building in, in a healthy foundation there. Um, I'd be very interested to see. We've talked for a long time about potentially adding a second set of Black Ops. Um, a, a more combat focused one and then have a more uh, EWAR and support focused one. I think that's still an interesting option, uh, partly because it would allow uh, a like Black Ops uh, blaster rope, which I think would be spectacular. Yes. Um, and just, I, I, I like it on a very visual, visceral level. Um, but uh, as for other ones, uh, I'm not sure. We don't have any set plans. We, at the moment, don't have uh, any kind of like set plans for uh, what ships we're going to release over the next year. Uh, if you guys have ideas for what kind of battleships you think there's a good role for, um, yeah. definitely let us know. Um, a, a shield support one would definitely be interesting. It might be something to put into another another pirate faction, another kind of. Uh, I guess um, ship on or Minmatal would fit perfect because both are shield. Yeah, some kind of like uh, Thucker convoy ship or something that would be interesting. Uh, 